Uh, David Hackworth uh, served four tours in Vietnam. Before that, he did hard combat in the Korean War as well. He was a commander of an Army Raiders unit in the Korean War. He got a battlefield commission in the Korean War. That means they, they made him an officer in the field in the middle of the fight. Um, he became the youngest U.S. captain in the entire Korean War after he got that battlefield commission. He was 20 years old when he became a captain. Before those four tours in Vietnam, before that remarkable tour in Korea, David Hackworth also served at the very tail end of World War II. And, and the reason his career was able to span that distance, to span all those different conflicts over those decades, is in part because he started really, really young. He used a fake ID to sign up in the first place when he was 15 years old. According to his New York Times obituary, he, quote, paid a wino to pose as his father to certify that he was old enough to join the U.S. Army. Again, he signed up at 15. In his career in the Army, David Hackworth was awarded 10 silver stars and eight bronze stars and eight purple hearts. David Hackworth was his name, one of the most decorated soldiers of his, of his generation or of any generation. David Hackworth was just 40 years old and a full bird colonel uh, in 1971 when, having just served those four hard tours in Vietnam, he decided back in the United States that he would go on TV as a serving U.S. Army colonel uh, because he felt like he had something to say to the American public about the Vietnam War that this country was still in and that he had been fighting in for all those years. And on June 27, 1971, David Hackworth appeared on an ABC News show called Issues and Answers. And in that TV appearance, he called Vietnam a bad war. He said the United States should get out. He basically made the case that it was unwinnable. And, you know, it is a powerful thing in our country when a, when a veteran, especially a decorated veteran like him, decides to speak out about a war that America is currently engaged in. But when David Hackworth went on TV in June 1971 and called Vietnam a bad war, he wasn't a veteran at that point. He was still in the Army. He was still serving at that time as a very, very highly decorated U.S. Army colonel. And so that decision from that position to make that dramatic pronouncement about the war on, on the TV news, that was how the U.S. Army lost the man who Vietnam Commander Creighton Abrams had called the best battalion commander I ever saw in the U.S. Army. After he made those public remarks criticizing the war, David Hackworth got out of the Army in 1971. He had to after criticizing the war as a serving officer in that way, or at least he believed he had to. He gave up his medals in protest, although they were eventually reinstated years, years later. David Hackworth moved halfway around the world. He lived in Australia for a while. He became a successful businessman there. But then he started writing books, um, acclaimed books, about the U.S. military and about our modern wars. And ultimately, he ended up coming back to the U.S. to become a military journalist. For a long time, he served as defense editor at Newsweek magazine, and he started to write a syndicated column for King Features. And in November 2004, so a year and a half into the Iraq War, David Hackworth, in one of his syndicated columns, he broke the news that the George W. Bush administration's defense secretary, Donald Rumsfeld, was using an auto pen, using a, a machine or a, or a stamp or something, using some sort of machine to automatically sign the more than 1,000 condolence letters that the Bush administration had had to send to families of soldiers who had been killed in Iraq. They were machine-signed form letters. The Pentagon initially denied it, and then they repeatedly denied it, but David Hackworth, turns out, had him dead to rights. He had great sources. He had interviews with a dozen family members who were next of kin to U.S. soldiers who'd been killed in action in Iraq. He found two Pentagon-based colonels who backed up the assertion, who were said to be indignant about Rumsfeld's decision to do it this way, even as those colonels insisted on anonymity to protect their careers. Once David Hackworth broke the story, though, other news organizations were able to follow his reporting track down those letters, and in fact, he was proven to be right. It was November 2004 when Hackworth wrote that column. The following month, December 2004, it was Leo Shane writing at Stars and Stripes, writing, quote, Ivan Medina, 
a New York resident whose twin brother Irving was killed in a roadside bombing in 2004, told Stripes, quote, to me, it is an insult, not only as someone who lost a loved one, but also as someone who served in Iraq. Illinois resident Betty Sullivan, whose son John was killed in November 2003 while working as an army mechanic in Iraq, she was incensed when she and her son's wife and her grandchildren all received the exact same condolence letter with the apparently stamped signature. Sullivan told Stripes, quote, how many signatures does this amount to? For those of his wife and children and mother, no, no, no. So David Hackworth started off that reporting. And the Pentagon denied it, but Hackworth was proven out, and Donald Rumsfeld and the Pentagon ultimately relented. December 16th, Donald Rumsfeld put out a surreal statement, which I should note, never technically admitted what he had done, but it was surreal. This is what it said, quote, I have directed that in the future, I sign each letter. <laughs> okay. And the surrealness of that statement and the behavior of Donald Rumsfeld, it was a little, a little snapshot of the George W. Bush administration on this issue. But beyond that personal strangeness from Rumsfeld, this is not the kind of issue in which you find a lot of dissent, right? You might find denial, but once it was known what they were doing, there really wasn't anybody in the country who didn't have the same feeling about, the what, uh, about what the Bush administration had just bumbled into there and what Hackworth had discovered they were doing. Right? Who, who thought that was a good idea? I mean, you might, not, you might have disbelieved it when you first heard the reporting, but once you found out that it was true, I mean, callousness and impersonal treatment of soldiers killed in battle and their families back home. It is a hot third rail, not just in American politics, but in American values, American ethics. I mean, the George W. Bush administration had also banned any public footage of soldiers' remains being transferred home on flights from Iraq and Afghanistan at Dover Air Base. They said at the time that it was uh, somehow out of respect that they wouldn't allow anybody to see those dignified transfer ceremonies, but there was a really fierce fight at the time about how that decision by the Bush administration also shielded the public from the cost of the war by effectively hiding the loss of those service members. And when Barack Obama was sworn in in 2009, he immediately lifted the blanket ban on media coverage of those solemn transfers at Dover. And so we were once again able to see ceremonies like this. He lifted that ban in 2009, February 2009, right after the inauguration. Then a couple years later in 2011, President Obama changed the policy on those condolence letters further. Uh, those condolence letters sent to soldiers' family members after a soldier dies in theater. President Obama changed the rules around those in 2011. So in addition to writing those condolence letters to the families of soldiers who were killed in combat, President Obama in 2011 also started sending the same kind of letter to the families of soldiers who committed suicide in the war zone. Since after all, those are war deaths too. So this is just incredibly solemn, incredibly serious stuff for all the obvious reasons, right? If there's one thing a country should keep faith about, it's the thanks and respect to the family of people who gave their lives for this country, right?